Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This is Leon, your host, and today I want to share with you a conversation that I had with Melissa Vint, also known as Melissa McClure. Now, Melissa has been a fixture of the San Diego wedding photography scene for some time. She's super well connected, really knows her stuff, and I'm excited to share this conversation with you. Today's topic is all about personal brand, how to sell yourself by positioning your personal brand. And so we talk about the website, we talk about the customer experience, and much, much more. So I hope you'll enjoy this show, and let us know in the comments, what kinds of things do you struggle with when it comes to showing your personality or selling yourself as a brand? Thanks for listening. I hope you'll enjoy. Melissa, thank you for being with me Hi. today. Hey, so Hi, we- how are you? I'm doing great. We go back quite a few years and I'm trying to think of the time that we actually first met. Do you happen to remember when we first met? I want to say it was at WPPI when we were mm. there probably five years ago, four years ago, maybe. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I just, I can't remember. You kind of feel like it's, it kind of feels like you've always been a part of the, um, the, the fabric of the industry as I've known it. So I feel like maybe we've gone back even further than that. Anyway, no, I think, I, think so. I think so, but yeah, <laughs> doesn't truly, truly, truly matter, but I've always found you a kind person, a very helpful person. And, um, I've always enjoyed talking with you. You're also based in San Diego. What, what part of town are you in? I'm in Oceanside. Oceanside. I'm in Encinitas, which is like just a couple of villages away. <laughs> so, uh, we we talked a little bit before about the subject that we're going to talk about today, and I think it's a very important one. I find that many clients, I talk to clients, uh, I talk to new photographers practically every day. Um, people are just getting started. Maybe they're in the first or second year. Um, maybe they've been at it a few years and they feel like they're ready for some kind of rebirth or remix of their business. Um, but one thing is for sure, this is a very, being a very artsy Um, type of industry, our feelings get involved a lot. And I think that there is a a common thread among a lot of photographers that prevents them from maybe taking their business to the next level. I think it has um, a lot to do with what you're going to talk about today. And um, that is selling yourself, the ability to sell yourself. Too many photographers that I've he- uh, that I hear from say that they just don't want to be too salesy. They don't want to put too much pressure on and all that kind of stuff. And um, I think that you can be a successful photographer without having to be overly salesy. Um, I think that it's kind of sad to see such great, brilliant professional photographers um, burn out after a couple of years because they're not actually able to sell themselves and they don't really make any money in the industry. So they go back to their previous career or move on to a different career. Give me a little bit of background about your start, where you started as a photographer and where did things start changing for you or did they? Have you always been confident in selling yourself? I have not, and I and I'm really struggle with that even even now um, to this day. I think selling yourself in a traditional sense, like a car salesman, is not is not the way to go. I think sure. that um, I'll tell you a little bit more about my background. I have been doing photography for 20 years. This year, I started in high school, and I um, t- majored in photography, and I got a degree, and I went into photojournalism, and that's where I kind of had a little. Um, I don't know, quarter life crisis, I guess it's called, where um, I realized I wasn't exactly doing what I loved and I wasn't where I needed to be. So I quit photography for about a year and then had, was convinced to do with my first wedding by a coworker. And that's when everything changed for me and I found the wedding industry and, and really grew from there. But as far as your question on when uh, selling myself changed, was when I had a fully custom designed website done. And I want to say this was about six or seven years ago, maybe maybe closer to six years ago. And I had an idea and I had colors and I had everything came from, from inside me. And I also kind of pulled some friends and, and told, they told me, Oh, this, yeah, these colors make me think of you. And, and this branding makes me think of you. And I, ran with it and I took it to a designer and she made my website come to life. And it's actually the, the current website that I have now as well um, mm-hmm. with a little bit of updates. But that was huge for me because I started getting emails from clients saying, Oh my gosh, I like these things too. And I, 
I can totally identify you with UMS or, oh my gosh, I can feel like we're friends because of your website. And that was huge. That was a, that was a huge turning point for my business. And I just started seeing growth after that. Interesting. So it, it, it's, it's almost like you were able to find your identity as a photographer and you were able to project that accurately. Absolutely. That's exactly what happened. And I took a little bit of a risky step. I, um, you know, most photographers' websites, they front and they have a gallery or a slideshow. And I decided to not put a picture on my website. <laughs> and you know what? It was a little bit risky and it worked for me. Um, I don't have a photo on the front of my photography website. <laughs> you have really? to dig a little deeper to see photos. Because truly, I am, I'm, I'm a decent photographer. I'm, I'm, I'm a good photographer. I'm not in, you know, out there amazing you know, making $10,000 a wedding photographer, but I am really good at portraying who I am and therefore getting clients to, to trust me and want to hire me and so forth. Yes. Okay. Now, just so that uh, listeners at home, viewers at home can see what we're checking out, uh, you were married recently, so your last name has changed, um, but your website is still, just want to confirm, Melissa McClure? Dot com. So my maiden name. Yes. Okay, cool. So let's do this really quick. Yeah. If technology is a total win, then I should be able to screen share um, okay. your website here. <laughs> so we can kind of cut yeah. to seeing your website. Yeah. Chopped off a little bit, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. So here's what I see. Um, yeah. So let me move this window a little bit smaller. Does that help a little bit? A no, little bit. Maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No problem. Well, okay. So you're right. There's no photo on the front of this, but it's a very mm-hmm. colorful, very exciting, very creative kind of vibe. Um, talk to me about the, uh, the origin story of this. Like, where did you get this concept? You know, I, it came to me um, while talking to some friends and I just love the idea of the illustration. I think it's different. Um, it's, it, it just felt right with my branding. Um, as far as the colors go, I really love blues and reds. And, you know, if you know me, I wear a lot of bright red lipstick and, and that sort of thing. So it was, it just kind of all made sense to me. And I had this yeah. idea in my head and I hired a designer to specifically draw exactly what I wanted. And I really wanted to focus on destination weddings. Um, I had, yes. a, had a couple under my belt at the time, but I thought, I thought that if I kind of make it my niche, that it might uh, work. And it did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I do destination weddings now. Um, but there were little things that are injected in here. So the travel obviously is very a big focus, but if you see there's little cherries on the, on the back of the, I guess it's a chest. <laughs> um, yeah. My last logo before this one was actually a cherry because I've always loved yeah. cherries. I have a cherry tattooed on my wrist so that's a kind of a little like Easter egg sort of sort of thing that once they meet me and they see that this is a tattoo, it kind of makes more sense. Or if it's oh, an old client cool. that mm-hmm. logo, I just kept a little bit of my personality um, shining through in, in ways that a new client wouldn't necessarily know right away. Yeah, I love that because instantly everything about your website says I love to travel. So that message comes through loud and clear. I love it. Great. Good. <laughs> now, here's the yeah, let's go about- yeah, I have not been to this version of your website. I'm so sorry to say, um, but I love it. And this is a great experience for me as a first time viewer of your website. Now, here's one thing that I always do when I'm uh, looking at prospective clients' websites. When somebody um, comes to us and said, hey, we're interested in using your services for post-production, um, whether that's through an email or, you know, uh, a notice, uh, you know, a note on the website or something. Um, I always go to their website and see their work. And one of the yeah. first things I do is go to the about me page. So I'm going to go there yeah. right I now. Do. Let's go there. Okay, yes. cool. I love, I love my about me page. It's, um, I've actually had some quite a few photographers that are do uh, mentoring. They use mine as an example on what to do. <laughs> Cool. So you've got, you've got a great cross section here of your favorite things. Love that. So it gives a, you know, real look into the things that you do, the things that you love. Um, you've got a text list there as well. You've got a cool photo of you and your hubby, um, you know, super happy. It shows your tattoo, um, you know, great smile. And then you have a video down here as well. And of course, links to all the socials on all the pages. I love that. Um, I have to say, 
one of the things that um, I guess is is maybe a pet peeve of mine when photo- when I do look at photographers' websites is that when you go to the about page, they either have no photos of themselves, like it's a, a bridal photo from mm-hmm. like one of their clients, or um, it's them hiding behind the camera. Now I kind of get it, right? Like that's the view that the photog- that the client is going to see of their photographer. They're going to see this camera in front of the face, kind of thing. But I feel like it does nothing but create a barrier between you and the client, you and the prospective client. Now your about me page, it, it gives me so much, uh, it gives such a great picture of your personality in a split second. And I know immediately whether or not I can connect with you, right? Like, Oh, like, yeah, she likes beers. She's got tattoos. She's got a great smile. looks like she loves to have fun. This is awesome. Um, so I can tell a lot about you and your personality just by that quick look. Um, whereas a lot of photographers either hide behind the camera or they just refuse to be on their about me page visually. What do you think about that? I a hundred percent agree. And that's exactly what, what I go for. And I'm glad that you see that because that's what I want. Um, totally agree with you. I, the first thing I want to see is I want to see your face. I want to see you sure. happy. I want to see that, you know, I want to see if we could be friends and I'm going to judge that on a photo. <laughs> and <laughs> totally. Another thing with, um, I prefer the list thing just because I'm not good. And most people aren't good about writing paragraphs about mm. themselves. Yeah. So I encourage people to do the listing because it's easier and it's fun and it's easier to read. Um, but when people sit there and list, you know, three or four paragraphs about their passion and why photography, you know what, I would rather hear what you eat, like to eat for dinner or what you want to watch on TV, because that's going to make me feel more connected to you than to right. hear about your passion. Like the about me section is really the time to tell people who you are and sell yourself. That's the easiest way to sell yourself to somebody because they're already going there to buy what to buy you, you know? yeah. <laughs> to buy <laughs> they They want to buy what you're selling. You need to give it to them. Yeah, exactly. So among the um, among the list of things that you see the photographers do that is um, doing themselves a disservice when it comes to selling themselves, what else do you see? Oh, man. <laughs> I think that um, there's many things. I do a lot of – I do some mentorships, and I do a lot of uh, website and portfolio reviews. So I have a lot of things that people shouldn't do. <laughs> but yeah, well, lay them out there for us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So uh, the first thing is, you know what? I really feel it's important to show your personality through your entire website, not just your about me section. And that comes with right. the colors, um, the branding, the logo, everything, choose things that, that mean something to you. Cause in turn, um, that'll attract the right client, but your contact form. So the number one thing is you need to, if you have a contact form, you also need to have your email address on there somewhere, mm-hmm. which is, um, someone can easily copy and paste because not everybody wants to fill out a contact form. Some people want a direct email, but with your contact form, I really feel like you can have a little bit of fun with it. Um, I don't know if you can go to my Leon. um, I'm going right now. You see, you're reading my mind. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, Here we are. The contact form. It doesn't have to be crazy, but here's another little picture of me. Um, it doesn't have to be crazy, but if you notice, I have one question in there, your favorite travel destination. And that tells me a lot about my clients in just that one answer. If they write out a long thought out, like, oh, I really love this place and I can't wait to visit this place, then they're probably more likely my client. If someone sure. just puts in Disneyland or, you know, which is also mm-hmm. very cool, but, you know, if they do a one word answer or leave it, uh, you know, not applicable or something, then they might not be the right fit for me. So gotcha. I can tell them yeah. just one fun That's question. interesting. Nice little, nice little technique. I like that. I, and I love that the yeah. the photo that is on this uh, contact page or the connect page is of you with just an amazing smile. Like you're laughing, you're having a great time, which is a very inviting um kind of photo, right? Because I feel like a lot of people, myself included, when I go to a contact page on a website, I might have a little bit of apprehension or skepticism. Like, do I really want to do, are they going to put me on a list? Is this going to be, yeah, I don't know. But when I look at this contact form, I see a super friendly person who's laid back. You're literally laying down. <laughs> You're laid back. You've got a, um, a scarf on and I see some accent colors that match what's going on on your website. Yep. It just it integrates really, really awesome. well here. Well done. Yeah. And I, you know, 
it's not that's not a perfect picture of me like I, my scarf's a little, a little out of place but you know what that's who i am like i sure i show up and i might be my pegs not might, might not be perfect you know during your engagement session but um inviting is exactly the word that i was going for so that's great cool so people should take great atten- uh tr- take great care to craft their about me page they should take great care to um give attention to their contact form make it inviting make it easy uh to contact you maybe they don't want to fill out the form maybe they just want to write an email on their own that's fine Uh, so make your email address accessible um what are some other things that you see people do when it comes to um either their website or just the way that they present themselves so one thing that I really feel strongly about is that you need to, to write the way you talk. And that mm. means um, on social media, when you're writing posts, when you're writing Instagram, uh, <laughs> Instagram responses or captions, sure. use your own voice. Um, you know, it's, it's super great to use a really nice roomy quote or, you know, say like, this was an amazing wedding. Those are great. But if you take a little bit more of your personality and write more like what you want to say and what you would say, then that's going to make clients feel more comfortable. And when they meet you, they're, they're getting what they see online. They're getting the same thing. And that creates so much trust. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. I think about how I communicate as uh, essential edit on our socials or on our emails and things like that. And, um, you know, I think for many years I probably did – fall within that category of trying to write, um, you know, emails or social posts in a way that um, was maybe a little different than my voice. But I felt like once I really was able to just write it as myself, it was so much more freeing and it was so easy. It was so much easier to connect with people. Um, One of the things that I joke about is that I probably overuse exclamation points more than anybody. Um, I'm just a very positive, happy, upbeat kind of person. And so when I speak, um, I feel like I'm naturally just using a lot of exclamation points. And when I type, I almost use them. I think that there are probably some people that that might think I overuse them, but I'm okay with that because um, I just, I like to always kind of bring a smile to people's faces, even if it's just through a simple email. Um, you know, we've had times where we blew it for a client. Maybe we delivered something that they was that they weren't expecting. Um, you know, our uh, our editing was off or something that day uh, for that client. And you know, what? I'll be the first to goof on myself. I'll be the first to say like, "Hey, we blew it. I'm so sorry. Uh, let me talk to the team. Let me get this, you know, right to the front of the line, and we'll take care of it for you." Um, you know, but uh, you're right. I feel like for me as a business owner, um, you know, as the face of the company. It's been very freeing and um, empowering to just own it and be myself and not who I, ex- who I think maybe people expect to see or who people want to see. Um, and I think for a photographer, that's especially important, right? Because it's, it's such a personal connection that you're making with somebody. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. What else do you have for us? I say that kind of segues into my next little uh, <laughs> thing nice. is um, when you are posting on social media and you're posting on Instagram, it's important to post personal things, not just pretty pictures. Sure. So you're posting last week's ride, you're posting last week's engagement session. And then, you know, every three to four posts interject something personal. I'll throw in a picture of my cats that I took <laughs> or um, recently I just had a nice photo taken of me while I was out on a retreat and I put it in there and I, ask my audience a question and you know, I, they want to see your face and they want to see not just pretty pictures, you know, they want people want to know what's going on in your life. Sure. So, um, it, that also segues into like Instagram stories or Facebook stories and that sort of thing and getting yourself on video. Um, yeah. I had this like light bulb moment when Instagram stories came out mm-hmm. and I all of a sudden, these people that I follow, these photographers or these brands that I followed that I had never met in person, that I literally just see their Instagram feed, they started popping up in videos and doing doing videos. And it was mind-blowing how I saw them differently because of that. Sure. Um, it made me realize the power of video and how important it is to show your personality in video that just can't come across in pictures. Yeah. And um, I'm so glad that I did a promo video on my site. I'm trying to... I'm, very, very uncomfortable in video. Um, I always have been, and I'm really trying to push myself to get out of that. Um, 
and actually do Instagram stories and, and that sort of thing. Um, I don't do as many Facebook stories. It's mostly Instagram stories, but I'm trying to push myself and show a little bit more of myself that way and, and yeah. let get people, let them get to know me. You know, it's, it's interesting as you're talking about that, I'm thinking back on the, the day when I was looking for my wedding photographer and now hang on a second here. Cause this was last century, right? So the difference in, shopping for a photographer now versus then is so much different. Okay. When I was shopping for a wedding photographer, I didn't even know where to begin. I'm, do I buy a bridal magazine and look through the ads there? What do I do? And it really just came down to a friend who had recently gotten married and they said, yeah, we liked our photographer. You should go talk to this guy. And we went and talked to him, but you know, honestly being a 20 year old kid at the time, I didn't really want to go like spend two hours with that guy and two hours with that guy and two hours with that girl. And I didn't want to spend all this crazy amount of time driving all around the city, looking uh, at a photographer's albums and talking to them. And, and nowadays what's rad about social media is that if I were shopping for a photographer, a wedding photographer, I could easily shop for 10 or 20 photographers in the same city um, and really get an idea of who they were and the style of work before I ever even get to that contact page. Um, but aside from that, I have to say uh, one of my good buddies, uh, Rich Lander, uh, you may know, uh, he's in Orange County. Rich Lander's uh, been doing great things on social media and I it on social media. I know. And that's one of the cool things that I've seen on his uh, Instagram is him practically booking clients in the comments. So yeah. he makes an amazing post yeah. and people are loving it and people are talking about it. And then people are saying like, Hey, I'm getting married next uh, July, next year. Um, you know, how do we get in touch? How do we hire you? And, you know, he just handles it so well. So what an opportunity. You're right. Uh, your personality is what uh, people are ultimately buying. Of course, they the standard is that you've got to pre present amazing imagery. You've got to be a great photographer, of course. But right. it does come down to, uh, you know, and that's the thing. That's like kind of the, the starting point for all professional photographers. Like if you don't present amazing images, then you really... Uh, you can't be considered in the industry, right? Like you're not going to get a lot of clients. So that's kind of this, the baseline. You have to have good images. But when it comes down to somebody who's got an amazing personality versus somebody who has a personality maybe you don't connect with, the decision is going to be really, really easy. So I like this. I like this uh, idea of you know being yourself, being transparent on social media. Um, what else do you think comes into play psychologically for photographers? I mean, one of the issues that I see so much is that photographers will come to me and say, hey, um, what do your other clients price their base packages, their baseline packages at? What are they, how are they pricing um, prints or things like that? So a lot of photographers really struggle with pricing. And I think that it has to do with, um, you know, a, a per, something personal that's inside. How would you address that issue? And how would you encourage a photographer to um, sell themselves better so that they can have a sustainable business? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, it's really seeing what you, you know, it depends on the market that you're in too. Like San Diego is extremely saturated. Um, but like someone in the small town in the Midwest may have a completely different pricing structure. So sure. it really depends. Um, I, I do a lot of mentoring with, with newer photographers and like the question about how to price yourself comes up always. Yeah. Um, and what we do is we encourage, um, we encourage like pricing with packages so selling, you really want to sell your mid package. So make your small package um, not nearly as good as your middle package and, and so forth and so forth. Sure, so, you've, uh, you've got to add value that makes sense. Um, so however you structure your packages, it's, it's got to be that value added so that they see uh, the advantage of going over, you know, one or the other. Um, right. Do you feel I have like a little tricks that I you have a trick you want to share? <laughs> I have a little trick that I tell um, new photographers that aren't, that are not yet charging and don't know where to start. And mm, okay. I, um, I tell them that when you start, you know, do, do a couple portfolio building sessions, maybe for friends and family, pick and choose the, the type of people that you want to photograph in essentially mm. like a model call or something like that. Um, and then set your number, set a limit to those. So let's say you do three 
portfolio building free, free uh, sessions. And then you raise your prices. Let's just say an easy, like $50. You book three sessions at $50 and then you raise your prices another $50. Mm -hmm. You book three sessions and you keep raising until you start getting pushback. When you start getting pushback on your pricing, that's probably about where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like that. It reminds me of uh, talking with a photographer, um, a uh, San Diego photographer who uh, has been in the biz for a long time. And, and he actually tells a story of when he was first starting out, how he was really sick of not making rent, not having, you know, food on the table kind of thing. And um, he just decided that systematically for a time, every six months, he was going to double his prices. Um, and I think that's basically what he did. He did that until he found that threshold where his clientele was saying, I don't think, I don't think so. That's just a little too much. Um, now the other thing that goes along with pricing that I feel like is, is a, is an issue for a photographer is the negotiator, right? Like most photographers have their set pricing. They have, uh, their packages all kind of laid out. But it seems like for a lot of photographers, they just don't love the art of negotiating and it almost destroys them. Like I, I see these conversations online about, oh, this bride wants a nickel and dime me. And, you know, they want to they want everything under the sun, but they want it for this price. How do you personally handle in your business negotiators when you present the pricing and then you have somebody who wants to kind of pick everything apart and mm, look for a deal? Yeah, I mean, it happens often. I think it's happening more often now. I think this is becoming a pretty standard thing. Um, I actually <laughs> happened to be on the phone yesterday in a consult. Um, I really try to stick to my pricing. Like, I, I, don't, I don't change my pricing. I don't discount my pricing. I don't want people to, to devalue what I'm doing. Um, yeah. but, I, but I also try to never say no to clients mm -hmm. or potential clients. So how I work around it is I moving um, things from the package. So, okay, you, you know, you're looking for $300 discount. Well, how about we remove one hour from mm. your wedding? So I'll take it down to you know, six hours, five hours. And therefore I'm giving a little and they're giving a little and sure. they're taking a little. So yeah. it's not devaluing, actually removing things. And then sometimes they're like, Oh, well, no, no, no. I want, I want to stay at that hour. So it, yeah. it kind of is a way to say no, <laughs> but yeah. not really. Yeah. Put it back in put the ball back in their court or, um, you know, I'm fine adding or removing an hour from the wedding. Um, cause that's not taking away from the pricing. It's just taking away from my time. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Did you feel like there was a point early on in your career as a photographer that, um, you wanted to charge more, but you were really, really scared to, if so, how did you overcome that or have you overcome that? And are you able to charge what you feel like you're really worth these days? Um, I'm currently still in. <laughs> <laughs> I have been stuck. I've been stuck at the same starting price for probably five years now. And I've yeah. just kind of been comfortable there and I should have raised them about three and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, I actually am raising them right now. I'm going through a slight uh, refresh on my brand, but I'm, so I'm raising them a couple hundred dollars, nothing big. But yeah, I mean, I I feel like my pricing should be a little bit higher than it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just plain fear stopping me. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get over that is just to do it. And remember that it doesn't have to be permanent. If I go mm -hmm. six months and I don't book anything, <laughs> then guess what? I can go back <laughs> to my other right. pricing. I don't... Right. You know, I'm not stuck. There's no rule that says I have to stay there for a certain amount of time. So yeah. I just, you have to push yourself out of that, that fear zone and, and really just do it and pull the trigger. Yeah. Good stuff. What else do you have for us? Are you, um, are you, so you, you provide this service to photographers. How would somebody who's listening, um, get in touch with you about that? Would they go through your melissamcclure.com site? Would they contact you elsewhere for uh, consultation? How, uh, how could these people get a, get in touch with you? I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentorships to any uh, level of photographer um, directly through my website. Mm -hmm. I charge, um, depending on what you want, I charge around $500 um, for, a, for a short uh, mentorship, either over Skype or in person, um, mm -hmm. whatever you prefer. Um, okay. Then I also do a lot of work with, uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are, but with Cole's Classroom. 
Do you know about? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Do you totally. know about Cole's Cosmos? Yeah. Um, yeah. So my buddy Cole started this uh, amazing website to help uh, photographers learn all sorts of things. He's really good at explaining what potentially uh, difficult concepts in like easy terms. Yeah. And he's got you know mil- million subscribers or something like that. <laughs> Yes. So I'm actually working, I work directly with, um, his, with his, um, students, I guess they're called, uh, in a mentorship role, um, where they pay through the Cole's classroom to, to learn. Cool. So That's cool. So you have yeah. kind of two lines of revenue for your business. Then you are doing weddings and portraits, I would imagine. And you're also uh, an educator. You mentioned off the air that you have an upcoming speaking gig. Is that related to coaching photographers? It's actually through the Coles classroom. Um, we're doing our first uh, little workshop retreat in November. So I'm going to be speaking on a little bit of the same, same sort of stuff, you know, um, bringing your personality into your brand. And, and I'm really excited. I've always, always had a goal to be a speaker and to do um, workshops. So this is kind of helping me uh, take a stepping stone into that. Oh, well, that's awesome. I think you're going to do great. Um, and I think that you have really valuable information to share with anybody uh, in the industry, whether they're uh, whether they've been at it a while, or uh, they're pretty brand new. But um, I want to say thank you so much for your time today. Um, super rad just to connect with you after all these years. And um, let's do this again. What do you say? Yeah, I would love that. Thank you so much for having me.